Hello and welcome again to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and nonprofit leaders and how they strive to make impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul J. Schmidt, owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia. And I'd like to welcome Christine from Ellie's Place. She is the director of Ellie's Place Capital Region. Thank you for joining me today, Christine. Really appreciate it. Paul, thank you for having us. <laughs> awesome. And as uh, I don't know if you caught any before, but how we start is since the show is called Mission Control, mm -hmm. could you tell us what your mission is at Ellie's Place? We, um, Ellie's Place serves grieving children and teens in our community. We provide peer to peer grief support groups for children to process their grief. Um, our mission overall is that no child shall grieve alone. Mm. Mm. And um, as a witness to that, I see it all the time, and that is a huge mesh mission. So tell me a little bit about what you do there at Ellie's Place. What is your role? What are, what are your day-to-day -day activities, if you have day-to-day -day activities? What's going on? <laughs> well, Paul, nothing is ever... Um, uh, the same here at Ellie's place. You know, if you're looking for my particular role, my particular role is to be an ambassador, um, to opportunities to speak about Ellie's place. Um, we, of course we have programming. Um, uh, sorry about that. We have, um, you know, our peer to peer grief support groups, um, no, you know, we have our events. The bottom line is Ellie's Place, our our peer-to-peer -peer grief support groups are provided at no cost to families. No cost. They don't have to worry about calling an insurance company. They don't have to worry about being um, billed anything. When a family calls for grief support for their family and their children, they don't have to worry about how they're going to pay for it. And one of my major roles is to make sure that we have the funds to ensure that we can provide our peer-to-peer -peer grief support groups. Um, and when speaking of that, uh, we recently had our audit from last year and we um, spend about 18.5% administrative costs and the rest of the dollars raised, so that's over 80% um, is all program-based, which I'm very proud of. We work very hard at being um, mindful of the generosity of the capital region um, that our dollars are not wasted and they go to program as um, is, is much. And you know, we do have some administrative cost, but we keep them as low as we possibly can. Mm. Mm. And, uh, and I think that that's huge because that just is a, a huge uh, uh, kudos to you and where you're putting your, you're putting your mission first. And that's obviously um, how you're looking at it. And it's really, really awesome that, you know, where you're getting the money and where it's really going is community based. And so uh, going into uh, before we get into Ellie's Place too much, there's something I, I came across about you that I found very interesting. Um, you started your professional career as a dietitian. I did. So tell me, I mean, I'm, we're going to talk about Ellie's Place, but that's an interesting situation because that I'd like to know what the how that connection happened, if there is a connection, or talk to me a little bit about that. Okay, this is super fun, Paul. I did. So I am trained, and I'm still a registered dietitian. Um, I had the, the privilege of working out at Cornell Medical Center in New York City in Mayo Clinic, as well as in Saginaw. So I've had a vast array of, of dietetics. Um, I love nutrition. Um, I think it's a cornerstone of how you're overall healthy, just like your mental health. So I'm going to start to weave them together. Uh, I worked at some pretty amazing institutions. Um, when I was at Mayo Clinic, we had the opportunity to diagnose. I was on a team of thiamine deficiency. Where would you see that in the United States? Um, I had the opportunity to write books, edit articles. Um, I had a really wonderful career as a dietitian, and I still do a little, I still dabble a little bit. 
uh, when we moved here, when I left Mayo, I worked actually, and that's back in the nineties. I worked remote for them for four years, way back before remote was the thing. Uh, and then I had ch uh, child after child after child, three kids every other year. And so I, I, I get completed my projects and, and um, bid adieu to Mayo Clinic. And then I started doing a lot of fundraising uh, um, here in the community of where, different places, Lansing Symphony, um, St. Thomas, where my kids are at school, lots of different things. Fast forward, I'd gotten involved with Ellie's Place in 2006 um, as a volunteer, as helping with fundraising, because um, my late husband and I loved the mission and felt very strongly that we should support, because um, if you support children now, you're leading them to a, a healthier future. And if they don't get the support, we know that it can get very challenging. There can be numbing, lots of different um, um, challenging outcomes and, and, and so forth. So as you weave this together, dietetics, and I, I'd explain this to somebody, and, and I talk about the mission here. When I used to talk to people about um, when I was doing clinical dietetics, um, whether it's weight loss, high cholesterol, um, diabetes, the key to is listening to the person and helping them find the changes that they can make. Um, and when it comes to talking about Ellie's Place, whether it's raising funds, talking about different things, it's listening to the person and meeting them where they're at. There's actually no difference. I'm just doing it in a in a different way. It's not guiding them in nutrition, if that makes sense. Well, as uh, somebody who's who's had to see dietitians as of late um, in the in the last several years, I mean, I can see where that correlation and that conversation can be. But not only that, but having health conversations and and talking about the whole the whole body and how how uh, you know, something you don't think could really affect you here. You know, it's one body and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's just interesting to me. Um, not that I'm an expert in dietetics, that's you. Um, but it's just, it, you know, like I said, you know, uh, going through some situations I did the last few years, you, you hear what people are finally saying to you and, and understanding is like, Oh, okay. Now I see where, where, where you're at with. The, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and so I've known, you know, I believe passionately of uh, what you eat um, impacts your health in many ways. Um, your emotional health, your physical health, the whole picture. Uh, same with dealing with mental health and grief specifically here at Ellie's Place, that impacts your emotional health, your mental health, your physical health. So it's kind of looking at the whole body and how we can help them be healthy. This is just a little different way. Um, and when it comes to talking about it, whatever, whether it's when you were meeting with a dietitian, the key, and I think this is so much in life, is just sit and listen to a person and then collaborate together on what the common goal is. But the key is to listen. Yeah, but wholeheartedly agree. That's that's what I, you know, my entire career has been built on being a listener. And so I completely agree with that. But when you're, so, you were with a dietitian, you could, I mean, it would be easy for me to go, you need to do X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. But if, it, if I hear you, um, and I hear that X and Y aren't going to work in your, the way your life is, then that would be silly. Let's find a way, just like our mental health. Let's work together to figure out, um, there's that algorithm, but there's gray and let's work together to figure out how to take care of each other, you know, to how to take care of yourself. That's very true. Um, yeah, because the simple fact, like you said, you know, you can have a menu Mm -hmm. But, you know, does it, people don't always gravitate to some of those menu items. And so you got to take that away because you have to cater that meal to that specific. And, and not that, not that I'm using, using a food based analogy with a dietitian, not what I meant to do, but you, <laughs> you know, it's exactly. True. It's just, but that, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's interesting to me. It's like, 
yeah and so uh, but before we get off the, the rails too much yes. <laughs> we are here to uh but that i found that interesting to me because it is not something you know where you're at the correlation between is just like what what happened here and so so in essence you how did you come across ellie's place then how did they come across your radar well i um was getting involved in the community uh in different uh nonprofits just to give back um and ellie's place came across and i came over here and took a tour and of course fell in love with love with it um and my late husband and i came in at, at two different angles he was a pain medicine physician and anesthesiologist and he said do you know how many people that come in that have, are um, addicted to narcotics that basically they're numbing themselves from something that's not physical he's mm -hmm. like if you help kids now you're keeping them from doing that in their life i had witnessed the death of two of my uncles and my and this is back in the 80s when you didn't talk about grief you know you just put your boots on and you went and you know there have been challenges since then. And I've seen um, I've seen people who haven't addressed their grief in children um, in the area. And I just believe wholeheartedly it is so important that children have a place to process their grief. They don't want to talk about it with their parent or guardian because they often don't want to see them cry. They can't talk about it with their friends or they can, but their friends don't get it when they say, I miss my dad. And, and you'll hear, well, it, I mean, it's been a year. Aren't you done with that? They don't get the that when a parent or sibling or a grandparent or someone dies, it really is very hard on a child. And they can come here to Ellie's place and they can sit in a circle with other kids who are processing grief and they're not alone. And they can ask those questions. They can say, like a young girl did, her brother died. Am I still a big sister? Mm -hmm. okay, that's a foundational question of who she is. And she's not asking her friends that, right, who don't get it. But here in group, one by one, these kiddos, well, my dad's my dad, my grandpa's my grandpa. And they went around the circle and it came back to her. And she's like, you know what? I am still a big sister. That is the magic and beauty. And if you answer those questions early on, you're not asking them the rest of your life, right? You've 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 figured it out. It's beautiful here. Mm. So, how did you transition from being a volunteer to end up working for Ellie's place? It was it was you know interesting. Um, my husband, we had some issues, and um, he uh, had to take a new job. And so we had some changes and, and I was about to go back to work a year in about a year because I'd been home with three kids and events in our life happened. And so I actually applied for a dietetics job to go back into clinical dietetics. And there was a position at Ellie's place. And my girlfriend took me to lunch and said, you have been fundraising for them. I had been hosting a table at our breakfast since 2007. I'd been, we had been um, on the host committee for the fall reception every year. We had done um, Ellie's race, volunteered as a family. And she said, you know, there's this position at Ellie's place. I think you should apply. And I've done a lot of fundraising. So sure enough, um, just worked out that I had a few interviews and Ellie's place chose me. <laughs> well, here's the question, though. So if you've been fundraising for them, volunteer wise, did they have a development director at that time? Or did you create a position for yourself? No, they had one. Um, and okay. she trend there was a, some transition as Ellie's place was growing. Okay, to other sites, we had a CEO. And so people moved around. And there was the opening for that position. And how lucky was I to get the development director de, director of development position? It's just, it's strange how life works, you know, and I, I think you know my story too, Paul. I wasn't working and then I, you know, life experiences, I go back and I'm in Ellie's place. And then you fast forward a year and a half later and Scott was killed by a drunk driver. And here I am now. Um, if I wouldn't have gotten the job, so if, these other life experiences didn't happen. I, 
I don't know how I would have gotten a job. Of course I would have had to, but all of a sudden I've got, you know, three, I got health insurance and um, you name it. I'm the only breadwinner anymore. So it was really weird how life experiences kind of led this way and how grateful um, I am that I had a job when, when my life imploded. Well, it's not just that you, you had a job in a, in a situation in which not only could, uh, the, could this, um, this job help you financially and land on your feet, but also give you, give your children a situation in which they can go to mom's work to get help. Mm -hmm. Um, that is, that just blows my mind right there. Um, and so how, how, how were your, I mean, I don't know if your kids were a little bit older. I'm trying to do the math in my head, but that always does not go well, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I'm not sure where they were age wise and how they, how they were able to be helped by your new position. So, you know, and we had been volunteering as a family at Ellie's place prior to all this. So they were well aware of what Ellie's place did. My children were 11, 13, and 15 when their dad was killed. Um, three boys, teenage years, mm. you know, do they really want to talk about their feelings? No. And I, you know, and all of the emotion, I mean, it, it was so much. And I said to them at one point, listen, I've been asked a lot. I'm being very careful, but I'm asking for six weeks. I'm asking you not one, two or three. I want six weeks. We're going to go to all these places and we're going to utilize the services. And after six weeks, we'll talk about it um, because you, you don't get a feel initially. And they agreed. I mean, and anytime you walk through our doors the first time, you know, people don't want to be here because you're acknowledging the death of person of the person. Fast forward, they stayed a year. Um, and since that time, each one of my kiddos who are now 20, 22, and 24 have, um, or will be starting, they have facilitated, meaning they work with kids and help them process their grief. So they have seen the impact and have turned around and have been giving back to um, kids who are grieving. Mm -hmm. That's that's amazing. That's like a full circle moment. Uh -huh. um, and uh, that's just, that's just huge. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I noticed that your position is director versus just director of development. Is there, a, is there, is that, uh, is there a difference in what you're doing? Prior right. Before? I oversee more of, of, of things here at Ellie's place. Um, Don, you know, I think, you know, Don had at our director of development, mm -hmm. who is fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. her and I work hand in hand along with, um, I would say the entire, you know, we're 12 people um, between program and development staff. We're lean. We work, you know, on days that program needs help, development comes in. On days that development needs a little help, program comes in. We are a, a, a small but mighty unit together. That's, I mean... That's very true, and uh, I mean, what you're saying, I've witnessed. <laughs> so, so it's an amazing, amazing uh, offer that you have running there. But um, just going back into the other situation, how did how did working at Ellie's place help you? I mean, help you deal with your grief? Well, first of all, when you work here. Um, one of the mantras is all feelings are okay. Um, I had six social workers I could go to all the time. It was okay to cry here, which I did a lot. Um, I also saw, understood, I knew it before the impact of these peer to peer support groups, uh, and you fast forward to the full circle as a volunteer employee and, and program participant. Um, I, I mean, I'm in the full circle and, and working here, I had the opportunity obviously to feel all the feels and not feel um, 
you know, going back to work and not feeling afraid to cry. I mean, here we have Kleenexes in every room. Um, so the support I had and the knowledge of working here and the importance, um, which is why I went back to my kids and said, you're giving me six weeks. I don't ask for a lot. I'm asking for this. And I, like I said, they gave me a year. So I um, felt very, for you know, life is strange. You are sometimes put in positions and you don't understand why. And then you look back and go, oh, this is kind of how all these puzzle pieces have come together. It's very, I don't know, I find life very um, interesting and beautiful and challenging. And it's interesting how it all kind of, how our path you think it is. And then you look back and you're like, wait, that happened because of, and, and look at how it impacted today. If that makes sense. Yeah, well, it makes a whole lot of sense. In fact, uh, my next question is really about your sons and as the experience that they've had with Ellie's place being part of their lives forever, um, has that impacted their, their choices and what they want to bring into the world or, or career choices, school choices, anything like that? Has that had any impact on, on um, where they have taken themselves forward into as they, you know, into adulthood? Absolutely. You know, life experiences guide them. And, 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 and truthfully, Ellie's Place has been a huge part of their, um, their life. Uh, you know, I have one going into right now, um, he's at law school and he said, you know, he, a couple months ago called me, he's like, guess what class I just signed up for? He's like nonprofit law. <laughs> And then my uh, second son is, um, I just moved him um, out on the West Coast, but his plan is medical school. And um, it speaks, he was a facilitator. Well, they all have been facilitators. And my third, same thing. They, they've all, um, and I've always told them to, you know, you need, we need everybody in this world. There are, I mean, many hands make light work. Um, my third son is in the business college. It's interesting. They're all in very different schools, but it fits who they are. Uh, and what they also are is they have servant hearts. And I can see that they, and they have all said that their time here, they didn't quite understand it as much when they were here as the long term, as, as time goes on, the skills that they learned they continue to use. Hmm. That's amazing. Um, they had their friend and it's all three of them was the young man, Brian Frazier that died at Michigan state in February. And they all, all three of mine knew him well. Um, and they all said they, that they went back to, and, and my middle one said, I didn't realize how different it was to grieve, not because we've always grieved as a family unit that I'm back in that grief, but I'm now with my friends and that I had more of a skill set because many of them have never had to deal with it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's true. It's difficult uh, to, to really walk, through walk with your child in this situation, um, you know, because you hope to God not to have to do that. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you're here and you have these programs that that help with that, you know, walking aside, walking beside um, going through that. It's, it's so crucial, so crucial. Um, so talk to me about, you know, you've, you've had this uh, career since basically I'll say since your volunteer days. So about 2006, 2005, whatever. So what, how would you describe, what is your biggest win that you felt? What's the biggest W that you've, that you feel like you've, you've, you had since being part of Ellie's place? What is something that's really, um, you know, you can hang your hat on. I could go almost on a, on a daily basis, something. Um, 
you know, the benefit of I'm out in the community a lot and I've been out where I've been having lunch and someone has said to me, oh, do you work at Ellie's place? And I, yeah, I do. And she said, you know what? Um, I attended way back 15 years ago and when my mom died and my sister and I, every year on her birthday, we get the memory boxes out and we sit down and we talk about our mom because we, we do a project where they make memory boxes and they can keep stuff, um, special stuff from the person who died. And to know that the work I do right now is impacting them for the rest of their lives. I mean, I don't think it gets any better than that. But I could tell you, Paul, from the time when a little um, cutie patootie came in to give their $5 from birthday because they love Ellie's place and their friend was coming here. I, I could go on story after story after story. The reality is we're a stronger community when we protect the vulnerable and our families are very vulnerable. And if we can help them, help them find peace, because it's never life is never going to be the same again, ever. Uh, but if we can help them talk through and feel all the emotions and find some peace, I mean, how lucky am I that I get to do that every day of guide it and make sure they don't have to worry how they're going to pay for it. And that's because this is incredible community. I mean, it, we are a community based community funded organization. No, absolutely. Um, what, what is something about Ellie's place that people may not know? You know, is there like a, not like it's hidden, but it's one of those things that people will, will know what you do, but they're like, oh, I didn't realize you did this as well. Um, I don't know if they necessarily, they know obviously um, that we have on site here, that we run program four nights a week. Um, it's coming out more, but we've been running school-based programs since 2006, where we partner with a school to run a closed eight week session we have partnerships with over 60 schools in this um, region. So I, I one in 11 children will experience the death of a parent or sibling before the age of 18. That number doubles by 25. The one at, up to 18, that's 8,500 children are grieving. But that doesn't include a grandparent, a teacher, a friend. We know we're not serving them all here at Ellie's Place. So we go to the community, we go to the schools where they're at to try and, and, and make sure that we are as available and, and these kids can get the resources they need. Amazing. Uh, I think that's key. Um, yeah, for the simple fact that I always, I've always said that my senior year in high school, Ellie's Place would have done wonders uh, for me and my family, oh, but we didn't have you guys, but it's so it was wonderful to see that there was something here in Lansing. Lastly, I want to like really dive deep into how do you unwind? How do you decompress? What do you do outside of Ellie's place? Um, I one thing I I do almost every day is walk four miles. That's my um, <laughs> that's been my time. Uh, I'm starting to bike and kayak, which I am so, it's been great. Um, and I have the cutest little three-legged dog who has been my um, buddy, especially since everything happened. And so I pet my dog and I read and do other stuff, but I, I'm a firm believer of um, taking time, especially the walking. I think physical activity is the single most underutilized antidepressant, anti-anxiety. And I've had my fair share of some dark times and making sure to get out and walk every day has been, um, it's obviously I, the dietitian, me, the physical component, but it's just as important for me mentally and emotionally to get out and do that. Yeah, absolutely. Wholeheartedly agree. And, uh, so what are any, anything key coming up in the near future for Ellie's place that we should be looking for? Well, we have in September, we do our fall reception here at Ellie's Place. Um, and that's a wonderful fundraising event that, again, helps us ensure that um, when a family calls, we don't have to pay for it. Um, we have Children's Grief Awareness Month in November. Um, 
you know, we always welcome anyone to come take a tour of Ellie's place. What we will typically hear is, I had no idea this is what happens here. I had no idea it's so big here. No, I mean, absolutely. Christine, this has been wonderful. We could go, we could go on and on mm -hmm. and talk about Ellie's place all day. Unfortunately, I have it locked down as a half hour segment and I really appreciate you coming aboard um, and talking about Ellie's place. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for this opportunity. No, absolutely. And uh, just in case people can't seem to find you, what's the best way to you, uh, for people to reach you? Well, you can go to our website, elliesplace.org, or our phone number is 517-482-1315, or we're on Facebook. Perfect. Thank you again. And thank you all for taking some time to listen to our program. So don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple of weeks. And if there's someone that you know of that you would like to hear about their journey, please email us at missioncontrol at introduce.com. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe on your YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform and maybe give us a positive review. Thank you again. And we'll see you next time in the control center.